Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, and we're dealing with a very interesting self-defense tactic, a very interesting survival tactic that I saw from what Jesus said. Never saw this before. I want you to go with me on here. We're going to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. Ye have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Verse 39, But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Verse 40, And if any man will sue thee at the Lord, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. 41. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. 42. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that borroweth of thee, turn thou not away. Now, this is the tactic I want to read. This is the tactic. Now, now imagine with me, okay? You can see, some of you can see my face. Now, we always hear somebody slap you. Turn the other cheek and offer the other one. No, 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 wait. Check it out. If I slap you with my right hand, if I come across your face, let's say, okay, here's a bottle. Let's say this is your face and I slap you. If you resist, remember the very next line in the same context Actually, it's the same verse, Matthew 5, 39. But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. That does not mean don't resist temptation. That does not mean don't resist doing evil. It means don't resist the evil that's being done to you. Interesting. Same thing with the cheek thing. If I slap Peter in the face, I just love using Peter as my object of hostility. If I slap Peter in the face and Peter resists me, the slap is going to be harder. But watch, I'm going to let this bottle go as a form of a person turning the cheek as I slap. If I slap and he is turned to go with the slap, going with the flow rather than going against it, the slap that I put on him won't have the sting or do the damage that it could do if he resisted. So look at my hand and my face. I can go like that, and it's like, okay. Or I can slap and resist it, and that hurts. That hurts even more. There are times, I remember Pastor Cushman years ago when I was going to Pasadena Church of God, he, he used an example of resisting. He said, a good run is better than a bad stand. Check that out. It's a survival tactic. And there are times that it's better to survive than it is to win. If you win and you're dealing with someone who is vindictive, you're dealing with someone who is volatile, who cannot handle being resisted in any way, shape, or form, they can come back at you with all kind of daggers, especially if they know what weapons to use against you personally. So there are times when a person can, can here's, here are a few examples. There are times when a person can accuse you of doing something more or, or <clears throat> and tell you, yes, you did. And you might want to say, no, I didn't. You know you didn't. And you don't like being accused of being something you didn't do. Sometimes the best thing to do is say, I'm sorry you feel that way. 
I'm sorry I gave you that impression. That's a way of going with the slap rather than resisting the slap. Listen, you know in martial arts and in self-defense, they teach you how to put your arm up. Somebody comes at you, you put your arm up. Sometimes if somebody comes at you, Another form of self-defense is the wisest one. If they come at you this way, instead of resisting them, turn with them and push them along so the momentum throws them off balance and that gives you time to run the other way. Listen. Jesus is so wise, so cunning, it's not always about let lay down and let people stomp on you like you're a doormat. Sometimes Jesus is trying to teach you something else. And we have always interpreted that as turn the other cheek. Well, let's put another spin on that, shall we? When we look at it physically, I can resist the slap, resist the the evil, like the next verse says, or I can go with the evil and not feel the sting, and it throws them off balance a little bit because they're expecting a resistance, and they end up, it's like, man, I didn't get the contact I wanted. Think about that. There are times when people come at you with their words, with their attitudes, they're looking for a fight. I'm going to tell you this, y'all. A person cannot argue as a monologue. Unless they stand there looking like a babbling idiot. You need a dialogue to have an argument. That's why there are times when it's better, as the Bible says, be swift to hear and slow to speak. Some of us have daggers for tongues, and it comes in handy at times. But there are other times when that dagger can come back to bite us because of the person we just stuck, resisting them in an argument, resisting them in a confrontation, resisting them in a false accusation, resisting them in any way, shape, or form can bring hell on wheels. And life can be so much easier if they walk away feeling like they humiliated you. If they walk away feeling like they won. No damage is done to you except a little egg on the face. But no damage is done. You don't have a welt. You don't have a black eye. You don't have a loose jaw. You don't have a missing tooth. You don't have any harm done to your body. Maybe a little tenderness, but there's no real harm. I'm talking figuratively. In other words, your pride might be bruised a little bit. But no bones are broken. You don't have to call you don't have to call the paramedics. Because you did not resist the evil. There are women who might be alive today had they not fought their rapist, but just let him get it over with and get on about his business. Ugh. Oh, there are times when you must be still and know that he is God. You must be still when you have every right under the universe to put up a fight, put up your dukes. Uh-uh, baby. This ain't going down like this. But sometimes it's better for it to go down like this than to go down the way you are about to set up the stage for it to go down. There are times when people resist the police and say, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, blah, blah, blah. And it could end up in death. Or a loved one could end up being shot by a stray, a stray bullet. Or brain damage can be done by a billy club because of the resistance. 
See, there are times Jesus is trying to teach us. It's not just about being meek and humble and a pushover. No, he's not telling you to be a pushover. He's telling you to survive. Survive the moment. The moment is not that deep. Get past it with as little harm as possible. Don't resist evil. Don't be so quick to fight, to rebel, to go up against. No, take your little dukes and put them in your pocket. Sometimes it's better to walk away and say, okay, okay, we'll talk later. Just walk away. Shut up, lower your head, and walk away. You want to live to see tomorrow? You want to keep your house? You want to keep your business? Don't give the judge any lip. Humble yourself. There are times when you, there are many times when born again Christians and wise people, period, will apologize when they didn't do anything wrong and they know it. All they're doing is being a peacemaker. A peacemaker renders way more life than one that battles every confrontation, everything that comes against them. They're resisting. Here's another one. The Lord just popped this in my head. Thank you, Lord. My mother used to tell me as a uh, when I was a little girl, she said, you know why drunks survive car accidents while everybody else either gets killed or mangled horribly? She said they don't brace themselves for the impact. They're too busy chilling. They're too relaxed. Their muscles are relaxed. They're just like... Is everybody happy? And when the accident happens, they've gone with the flow. And they might be bumped up, bruised, and scratched. Clothes might be ripped to shreds. But they're usually the, the ones lead, last to be hurt. Because of the relaxation that's in their muscles. They're not resisting. She said, when you see an accident getting ready to happen and you see the car approaching your natural your natural response is to straighten your legs brace yourself for the impact and she says sometimes that's the worst thing you can do when you watch people who are ex or not extras who are um the guys in movies uh, i forget the name of them but anyway senior moment but they they jump in and they play the role long enough to do a fall or a roll down the hill or whatever. These people are taught the science of how to fall, how to go with a fall, how to roll with it, go with the flow, roll with the punches is probably the best way to describe turning the other cheek. Roll with the punches and life will be much easier on you. You will have far less appearances in court. You will have far less confrontations with people that end up exploding in your face. You will have far less devastation. Amen? So let's turn the other cheek y'all. Because we're talking roll with the punch and walk out of that accident, that baby, that horrible confrontation, unscarred, totally, chilling, mellow as a cello. Amen? All right. That's the little lesson.